that music. He's not a bat, he's a man who fights crime And we're gonna watch him fight for a minute at a time With John and Will and I guess you just rhyme It's Bat Minute! Greetings citizens of Gotham And welcome once again to Bat Minute Returns the show that wishes you a happy holidays, three days a week, like a cheap knockoff of that great show, Feliz Navipod. I am one of your hosts, John Parker. I am the other host, Niall McGowan. Hello. Hey, hey, <laughs> guess who's back? Guess who's back in the house. And we are joined once again by our guest, comedian and cult recruitment apprentice, Polly Preston. Hello. Thank you for having me. Ah, no problem at all. We always want to get more people involved in your wonderful, wonderful lifestyle. <laughs> we were trying to get the head of your cults on, but the, I think it, the, we, we're trying to get the funds together. Because I know you will only appear for like a certain couple of thousand pounds, but we're, eventually we're hoping to gather the money. And maybe by the end of the movie, we'll have like, maybe we should start a Patreon for that, actually, to see if we can get, we can raise the money yes. for that. So, <laughs> How many Patreons are we doing? He's very reclusive, so that would be quite a struggle. But well, you, know, you can do it by Skype. That's fine. Everyone, everyone loves <laughs> Skype. <laughs> I'll put a good word in. <laughs> this is minute eleven of Batman Returns. I almost called it Bat Minute Returns, but it is also minute eleven of that. Mm. <laughs> Strangely, they coincide, and the minute starts with a lovely holiday greeting, and it ends with Selina in panic, panic, and she's in trouble. I will actually note the. So I forgot to bring it up at the end of the last minute. There's a little moment I loved that I always overlooked until looking at this, you know, minute by minute. As when uh, the mayor says to Shrek, "Oh, you know, you are you sure as hell don't have a candidate?" Shrek kind of gives him this real like, Meh. like he kind of he sense the anger between them, and he actually gives him a, an audible, <laughs> just sort of has to go about his business. But then in this <laughs> beginning of this minute. He switches into full-on public, b- benevolent public figure mode, where like he's just waving at everybody, and everyone loves Max Shrek for some bizarre reason. And uh, even at that as well, Chip Shrek kind of gives him a look of almost sort of, almost sort of looks at him a bit like dismissively or a bit sort of <laughs> so, uh, slightly not baffled because he knows what he's doing, but Chick, Ch- uh, Chips. Uh, look seems to convey to me like a man who knows like oh yeah this is him putting on the public persona this isn't what my oh, dad yeah. is actually like and uh, you think he would have chip uh, you know trained a little better to know not to give that look and to just be waving and smiling and stuff himself but uh, I guess the apple does fall far from the tree yeah he uh, he doesn't seem smart enough to me to to pull that off <laughs> I think yeah. he can't teach himself yeah, <laughs> it's like I think that's my what's like, like the the one massive failing in Max Shrek's, Shrek's life at the end is just like I just wish I could have taught my boy how to just wave benevolently like 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 I'm not an absolute scumbag like that's all he needs to know but he can't do it then and he just looks it's an too angry. Important skill. It's an important skill for a, uh, well, they're not politicians, but they're kind of playing politician, aren't they? So mm. yeah, you need to know how to do that. Kiss babies, wave at people, you know that kind of thing. Yeah. I should note as well that um, what I originally thought was Chip Sh- Chip's cane is actually Max's cane. He's handed it; he was handing it to his dad. So you know, in a kind of um, you call him Mr. Peanut kind of way. Max Shrek has now just got this like fancy cane. I guess he can use it to beat off people if they try what? to mob him. <laughs> um, Nile, the family <laughs> podcast. Not not public beating. Uh, we were talking about the painting in the previous episode. And I have it frozen on a clip here where the other man is introducing Mac and Chip actually does look a lot older. So maybe this is where they did the painting from, this particular ah. scene. They're all yeah, still in front of the tree. Be. He looks a lot older and Mac looks like a grandmother. So 
<laughs> so come back round. And, so, and like a grandmother, you know, be, being nice to everybody, handing out gifts. Mm. You know, my, my, my grand was like that. You'd go around and get like 50 things off her for no reason whatsoever. And a chalk ice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, especially food. You couldn't say no. If you yeah. said no, she'd get you food anyway. That's the thing. <laughs> one of the things, like, uh, there's a friend of uh, a friend of mine. I remember one time he was complaining to me. They said at one point he told his grandmother that he liked uh, Seven Up, like the you know the the, the 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 popular soda drink Seven Up. And he said like every time she comes to the house now, she always brings a big ball of Seven Up, and we've got like twenty of them out in the garage. That's because I don't. I just said it to be nice, you know. But like, oh, this is really annoying. Now I just keep getting constant balls of Seven Up, and my heart was melting. So I was like, "That's the sweetest thing I've ever heard." She makes the effort to bring you one every time, and you're just dismissing it, you asshole. What the hell's the matter with you? Just drink the Seven Up, you know. Yeah, Get over or it. Just, or at least just put it away and just be like, "Yeah, it's just a nice thing she does." But he, in fact, he was complaining about it. I was like, "What are you doing, complaining that someone's doing something nice for you?" But ah, oh well. At this point, though, we do get Mayor Roscoe Jenkins takes the mic. Mayor Roscoe Jenkins, of course, played by Mike Murphy. I know, Paul, you're probably thinking, oh, Mike Murphy, the, the, the RTE Irish television host, the host of Winning Streak, the second longest running quiz show in Europe. It's not that <laughs> It's not that Mike Murphy. It's a different guy. Okay, A but, different uh, one. Okay. I can could, I could understand the confusion. But like I know, dude, you're you're so set. Like, oh, of course it's the same guy. Who else could it be? But no, it's a different Mike Murphy. But this Mike Murphy, actually, interestingly enough, there could be a little intertextual reason as to why he was cast as the mayor, because you know he's f- a frequent collaborator. He was with uh, the um, the late great Robert Altman, who was one of the most acclaimed film auteurs of the New Hollywood era. Um, obviously, you know, Robert Altman directed many, many films, and Mike Murphy was in quite a few of them. Uh, he's in at least nine Robert Altman films from uh, That Cold Day in the Park. He was in the original MASH. He played uh, Miele Marston. He's in Brewster McCloud, uh, McCabe and Mrs. Miller, Nashville, The K Mutiny Court Martial. And then most importantly, he's in Tanner 88, which was a TV show where he played the um, p- potential uh, Democratic nominee for presidency. Uh, obviously, in 1988, that's why it's called Tanner 88. Uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, the, uh, Tanner 88 was a sort of like a you know it was a television show. It was a full on satire and had like Robert Redford and stuff in it. And actually, Pamela Reed, who we know from Kindergarten Cop and Junior, which of course contains both you know Danny DeVito. And Arnold Schwarzenegger, prospective Batman villains, who we may yet mention again later this very oh. minute. Hashtag everything's connected. Yeah, oh, Mr. But, Freeze. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, like in Tanner eighty eight. Yeah, it was, just, it was basically about Michael, Mike Murphy going up against the nominee against Jesse Jackson and Michael Dukakis, and it was it made so, enough of an impact that it was brought back for Tanner on Tanner later on uh, as a sort of sequel series way down the line. Um, but the fact that. You know, he was known for playing this, uh, Paul. You know, a, a, a decent politician trying to make his way through nefarious wheelings and dealings. That's the fact that now he's playing the mayor who has to go through the same thing in in uh, Batman Returns. It could either be like, you know, maybe Tim Burton's gonna go on like, "Hey, I'm not all just into like gothic weird stuff. I like <laughs> I watch other things. I watch Tanner eighty eight. Or it could be Marion Doherty going like, yeah, you should get this guy. And Tim Burton's like, I don't care who plays the mayor. I, I thought it was the same guy from the last movie. Why isn't it the same guy? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get whoever you want. I don't care. Whatever. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, that's, that's probably a... more likely to me. <laughs> but um, yeah, so that could be, I'd say that's probably almost definitely why he's been cast as the mayor. But eh, anyway. I looked something up here. The, the microphone there says WXRX. Mm. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to look that up, yeah. as is my job to do on this show. <laughs> that was one of my questions, so... Aha, uh-huh, brilliant. Well, ask the question, then, in case it's slightly different. Oh, it's like, ask so the what question. does W... Oh, no, I've ruined it. What does WXRX stand for? Does anyone know? No. <laughs> <laughs> Moving but, on. <laughs> but, no, no, no. I looked it up because I thought, is it is it a real thing? Is it made up? It it is made up for the movie. It doesn't explain anywhere that I can see what that stands for because it, obviously it's in Gotham. So yeah. I don't really. There's no G in that. Mm. But I 
looked it up and there is a real radio station with this name. I think this this microphone is for a TV network, but there's a radio station called WXRX based in Rockford, Illinois, and it's a it's a rock music station. I think people also call it the X to be cool. <laughs> Wait, you don't listen to the X? Oh man, oh, oh you're, oh, you're missing co- out, John. Jeez, no, first thing I'm doing after this, man, the X is going on. Um uh, yeah, that, it, it, that, that's, I remember I did, uh, much like yourself, did look this up. And what, what shook me is the whole fact that it's Illinois. Because then I was like, oh, is Gotham in Illinois? Because that we, we had established that, you know, in canon, in the comics at least, Gotham is supposed to be New Jersey. But then the Chris Nolan movies were filmed in Chicago. And Chicago's in Illinois. So I was like, maybe... What? 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 We've been wrong all this damn time. Yeah. Or it could be that it's a complete coincidence and nobody would possibly care about that. But you never know. Maybe we're, you know, what other films are set in Illinois? Halloween is in Haddonfield, Illinois. Could we have seen a Mike Myers or Michael Myers versus Batman movie? I want to see Mike Myers versus Batman. (laughs) That would be great, actually. (laughs) He's just like, I don't have, like, I'm just an actor. I don't know what you're doing. Shut up. Yeah, yeah, not Mike Myers as a character. Mike Myers. <laughs> I was very disappointed in the love guru. And it's like hauling him out by his hair and stuff. <laughs> we all were, Batman. We all were. Because Mike Myers, is he's bizarrely like, he's a man in a kind of out of, you know, Mike Myers actually the star of Shrek, well, appropriately enough. But oh, they, everything's connected. Yeah, yeah. But I guess he's a man kind of like out of comedy time now because those Austin Power movies were like great like 20 years ago. But now they're like, you couldn't do that now. Like it's, it's too silly. It's too broad. Audiences well, won't go for Apparently he's going to try and do it now. Yeah. The fourth one rumored again. Yeah. Mm. Rumor schmumer. Yeah. But wasn't the, the love guru was, was that? It's like I'm doing the same kind of shtick of like really exaggerated, very, very silly humor. And I'm playing like a really wacky character and stuff. And it's like, no, nope, people don't want to know. At least cinema wise, they don't want to know. But maybe he'll come around. Maybe it's like a, a, it's cyclical and he can get the, the crest of the wave the next time and be like, oh, Mike Myers is back on top again. Not that he's bad off. He's the freaking star of Shrek. I'm sure he's sleeping under yeah, fans yeah, of money. But <laughs> It could happen. I mean, Sasha Baron Cohen's just come back from out of nowhere. Mm. Yeah, yeah. But, uh... it will, it, th- that style will come back because musicals came back. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, against all odds. Same as fashion and hats. They'll come back. <laughs> well, Niall's been trying to bring hats back for a while now. Uh, <laughs> actually, sp- speaking of hats, though, like you can see in the background here of the, the shot of the mayor, there's a guy there with a big, impressively huge gray top hat. And it's mm. like, it really reminds me of the, the top hat Burgess Meredith wears in the old 60s show, which is like a... It's it's a sort of light purpley color, and this is like it's gray, but it's yeah, it's, a, it's a few tinges off maybe. Like they didn't want to be too blatant. Again, it could just be like oh, he's got a guy in a top hat, and I'm reading into it. But I thought it could have been potentially a little nod to uh, old school. No, I think you're right. Old school Bergy Bergy Meredith. I mean, surely knowing that Burton isn't the biggest sort of batman f- i don't want to say not the biggest fan but you know not the, not, he hasn't got the broadest bat knowledge shall we say <laughs> like i imagine the rest of the the crew would try and slip these things in because he wouldn't care he'd be like yeah okay cool do that yeah yeah totally <laughs> that makes it sound even worse though like in this movie it's like oh tim burton wasn't a batman fan <laughs> it's like he's in the middle of a second damn movie what the hell is he doing <laughs> yeah that's why i rephrased it slightly it's not that he's not a fan he likes batman fine he's just He's a bit like me, you know. He just he likes movies mm. first and foremost. I like movies first and foremost. Batman, you know, I don't go and read every comic. I know you read a lot of comics. I read you know, occasional ones. I'll pick this up. I'll pick that up. But I'm not. I'm. I'm I like this as a film. Mm. I've said this before. Burton's the same. He's like, oh, this will make a good movie. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. Has Burton done any other DC movies? No, no. He's. Uh, I don't think so. I think he's very much like this was his comic thing he obviously had um you know an attempt at a superman movie in the mid 90s which uh <laughs> which you know fell apart very drastically very famously it would have been incredible it would have been something to see i don't know if it would have been good but it would have been something to see because uh, that's where obviously you know, where all the nick cage and the superman outfits stuff comes that that was part of that which would have been just uh, i mean it, again 
probably wouldn't have been good, but it would have been something. <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure we there would have been a Movies by Minute podcast dedicated to that <laughs> that Superman movie at some point. Would have been Johnny Depp as Superman or something. It was it was Nick. Well, it was Nick Cage. He was the, there's the shots of him with like really long hair in a Superman yeah. suit <laughs> that just look like he filmed or he shot for him like the kind of costume fitting and they look awful but <laughs> it's at the same as you can imagine nicholas cage would look as superman with long hair yeah yeah but i'll have to for I'll, I'll send you send you the pictures on over because uh oh wow no there it is yeah there it is he <laughs> he looks that could be jesus superman super jesus i think it super jesus. it was it was called the death uh it was called superman lives and it was supposed to deal with what you see, actually, the friggin' in the DC movies at the minute. Superman was killed by Doomsday, and then he is resurrected. So yeah, they probably were trying to go for a Jesus kind of vibe from him. Still looks really silly, though, because because it's Nick Cage, and you know who Nick Cage is. And he's doing that thing where he always... Nick Cage always wears wigs, but they always, has really, they always have really receded hairlines. So it always looks like he's balding rather than he's just bald. <laughs> and it's like, just, just go one way or the other, dude. Like, was, you know, give, give yourself a better hairline if you're going to fork out for a wig, damn it, you know? <laughs> yeah, he needs, a, he needs a nice lace front. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, then we get the, you know, the mayor introduces Max Shrek as Gotham's own Santa Claus. And we got a shot here. Um, for one thing, you actually get seeing the back of one of these statues, so you got a nice little bit of statue ass there, which was uh, <laughs> which was very nice to see. <laughs> Chiseled buns, <Yeah>. literally. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Max Rex starts recklessly throwing packages into the crowd, and the guy was kind of my thinking was like, if this happened today, this would be like a thing on Twitter. People will be like, he could have killed somebody. Like he's just throwing boxes. <laughs> So you remember when Health they did that? Safety. Yeah, yeah. We remember they did that. I think it was like in the, it was like the Emmys or something a year or two back, when the kids from Stranger Things came out with like to give peanut butter and jelly sandwiches to the crowd. They they came up in little bicycles and everyone was like, oh, you'd think the world would be like, oh, that's cute because like they're riding the bikes about and it's PB and J and it's nostalgic and it's Stranger Things. Everyone loves that. And instead, Twitter was just like. They could have killed somebody. What if someone had a peanut allergy? This is just outrageous. <laughs> and a whole big thing kicked off about it. It's like, they were in paper bags. And I'm sure they did some sort of health and safety thing beforehand. They're going, if you got any allergies, let us know. And all this sort of stuff. So, like, but, you know, that's the, that's the way of Twitter now is to just erupt over any any odd thing. And, I'm, yeah, I can imagine Max Shrek just throwing boxes which could have had anything in them like he, to be fair he, doesn't he say they're baubles uh, I, I just took I, I thought he meant baubles in like like a symbolic thing where it's like oh oh I think it's a symbolic gift it's a and then well maybe they are maybe he knows they're literally baubles so he's he's throwing glass at people essentially <laughs> <laughs> again yes yeah. or maybe yeah. you never know how hard that cardboard is like a sharp edge could come down and take somebody's eye out like oh even worse, it could be actual stuffs in there. He could be throwing like a microwave into the crowd, <laughs> just like like you could see like, a look of panic on his face. It's like, oh my god, this package is heavy. Oh, it's it's already left my hand. Oh well, that's my that's the end of me. <laughs> Seeing some guy's head get caved in as it comes. Well, everyone's down. everyone's got hats on, so again, maybe there's a bit of protection there from <laughs> the onslaught of the glass or the microwaves that are being thrown into the crowd. Oh, that'd be great. <laughs> no, I mean he um. He seems to be winning them over with the presents, though. So they're, they're obviously not bothered about getting brained. But um, I mean, that's a good PR move, isn't it? He's, he's, a, he's a smart guy. Considering he's dressed like a movie villain, these people have... They love him. Mm. Oh, back to, back to the statues. It kind of looks like they're peeing. <laughs> and is, is that because Gotham's a toilet at the minute? And oh, the sewage. It's... Penguin lives in the sewers. Oh, there you go. Yes, and they've they've birthed the penguin, I've just haven't they? They've blown my own mind. Evil, <laughs> the evils of Gotham birthed the penguin. It's not his fault, and he's he's going to emerge from the sewers. Mm. Yeah, the, the, the the statue on the left is having trouble peeing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's so many people looks... watching him, you know. <laughs> he's, he's self-conscious. Uh, I mean, it's bad enough when there's a guy at the urinal with you, you know. I mean. <laughs> I have no no idea. Uh, I'm very firmly a stall person. Like I'm like if I can't get into a stall, 
I'm in trouble, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> like I'll go, to, I'll go to the urinal if if, if pushed, but it's going to be distinctly if pushed, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not pleasant, really. You're forced into it mostly as a man. It's, it's not nice. Nobody wants to stand next to someone else. Yeah. It, but you do get the odd chatty person, which is like, "What are you doing? Come on, dude, oh, yeah, that's the worst. <laughs> that's strange. That's strange. Drunk men talking to you. And you're like, I'm trying to pee. Can you show up, please? <laughs> <laughs> Like, I, I don't even know you. Please go away. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, then uh, Shrek goes into uh, you know, puts on his little half moon specs and uh, starts reaching for his speech. And um, it looks as if he's having some trouble. Like what what's happened with the speech? Performance anxiety. <laughs> then we cut to Selena Kyle up gathering up all the coffee and whatnot that she uh, she had served earlier because she only really gave those guys like five seconds to drink that coffee as well although she didn't i suppose chip came in and ruined it so it's not her fault yep. so all of her work making that coffee has gone to waste it's just in more ways she's sort of put down yeah and it's good no no because he says it's good coffee that's mm. positive it's good coffee <laughs> we're not gonna drink it because you've spoken but it was <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah fair play nice coffee but screw you mm. is, is the <laughs> attitude basically <laughs> But uh, but yeah, not quite notably, we get this uh, wall of framed photos in front of her mm. with uh, all the various peoples at Max Shrek, who for some suspicious re- reason seems to be wearing the same clothes and all the. the <laughs> it's almost <laughs> as if they took all those pictures at the same time and then <laughs> put all these other people in afterwards. Are you suggesting they they altered the photographs? No. I'm pretty sure Chris Walk- at least Chris Walken in that wig has met all the uh, definitely met all these people at some point in his life. He's, he's definitely met Elvis, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sammy Davis Jr. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, because we do get uh, the uh, you know go go through them. We have you know Sammy Davis Jr. Of course, uh, quite notably, Sammy Davis Jr. actually appeared in an episode of the old 1960s Batman show as well. Everything's connected. Yeah, he was in. Where was it? Uh, I've got the exact note here. Ba-ba-ba. Season two, episode "The Clock King's Crazy Crimes." Where Batman and Robin are going up the side of the building as they, as was their want, and Sammy Davis Jr. was one of the celebrities who'd pop out, going, "Hey, it's Batman!" And uh, I've actually watched the clip, and it's very strange because it's there's a, there's a slight tension in that, like he's like, "Oh, you guys should come in and like you know, and jam with us," and Batman's like, "Oh, the the life of a crime fighter has few diversions, but you know, thank you, citizen," and just keeps walking on, and then Sammy Davis Jr. goes, "Okay." Goodbye, Robin. It's like, oh, he's freezing oh. up, Batman. He's like, oh, uh, it's, I'm not taking this crap. And he's just like, oh, all right. oh, okay, Robin, you didn't say anything to me, but like, at least you didn't diss me like Batman did. Now, that's why he's secretly working with Max Shrek on this plan behind the scenes. <laughs> he's the real mastermind villain. He's the he's the Snoke. <laughs> but uh, and yeah, then we get uh, other pictures. There we have we have one with him with Nixon and Elvis. But the one with him with Elvis is very distinctly modeled on the famous picture of Elvis meeting Nixon that one time, which is just a bizarre friggin' story in and of itself. Of uh, you guys know about the whole story of Nixon meeting Elvis and whatnot? No, no. no. Uh, apparently, like Elvis called up the White House one day and said that he he sort of pretty much demanded a meeting with Richard Nixon, and then he showed up and it turned out he was very concerned about crime in America. And that he wanted uh, to be like a he wanted to be made like an undercover narcotics narcotics uh, sorry narcotics agents so he could help fight crime and stuff and uh, yeah he sh- apparently he showed up with like a gun for Nixon going like this is a gun for my private collection <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, it, apparently he talked about things like I've got like someone's written a, there's a there's a movie about it with um, Kevin Spacey as Nixon and Michael Shannon from friggin' Boardwalk Empire as Elvis like Ooh. General. Modern General Zod is Elvis, which is crazy casting to me. Uh, That's amazing, though. I look, I could see him doing it, even though he doesn't look like. It. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, uh, someone's also written a book about it, and a couple of notes he had was uh, saying that uh, that Elvis thought that the Beatles had a real force for anti-American spirit, and then he said uh, the president gave his opinion that those who use drugs are also at the vanguard of anti-American protest. So it's basically. You know, according to the the Wikipedia entry on this whole thing, at least Elvis showed up with grave concerns about hippies, counterculture, <laughs> and the Black Panther movement, 
and was yeah he wanted to be made and apparently he had a collection of uh police badges and he wanted to be made an official member of the bureau for narcotics and dangerous drugs so he could one <laughs> help them out and get the badge <laughs> This would make a great TV show, just Elvis solving crimes. Yeah. And stuff. <laughs> that would be a great TV show, actually. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so there's a famous picture of, um, like, even in The Simpsons, that one where Mr. Burns has the picture of Elvis in his office. That's supposed to be mirrored over the, you know, the, the famous picture of Nixon and Elvis together. So uh, um, I particularly like the one with Arnie because I just, my first thought was, oh, He's actually, he's not Arnie in the picture. He's not Arnold Schwarzenegger. He's actually playing a certain character from a later film. Yeah, it, it could be. So it makes it sense. It could be. But, but yeah, Arnie here is playing like famed scientist, Victor Freeze. And maybe yeah. Max Schreck is like, oh yeah, um, uh, we've met up to, you know, I don't know, maybe he's, he's given him funding for some of his experiments or something or like maybe yeah. maybe victor freeze just won the nobel prize he's like here yeah, here i am with the with my buddy victor freeze and stuff and yeah or freeze helped him create the power plant yeah like the the how it generates the power yeah it? you can tell it's uh it's 70s arnie slash victor freeze as well because he's got that really lame haircut <laughs> <laughs> sexy haircut Niall. come on but that's the thing like arnie hit that flat top in like the early 90s and it never went back for actually well, even before then because he had it in the commando and stuff so in mid 80s yeah, yeah. he discovered flat top haircut for arnie that's the only way to go if he tries any other attempt at a haircut it just looks ridiculous on him <laughs> the thing is that, that's definitely a meeting though of, i would have loved to see though because it's like those two guys like those two voices of like oh hello uh you know mr freeze i'm very happy that you've uh, decided to do experiments and, oh, i'm so happy max that you have accepted me and do <laughs> it's the two of them going back and forth it's like that's a spinoff i want to see just the two of them working on any project at all yes please uh but yeah yeah um other yeah, throughout the movies uh, throughout the other photos apparently i think up in the top left is reagan uh apparently george bush senior's in there as well um and yeah that's a it's a it's a it's a, it's a, it's a hell of a collection i'll give him that anyway it's amazing yeah. oh i just remembered something actually i completely forgot to mention about the elvis one because mm. uh, in, in relation to elvis presley the, the actor uh i've forgotten his damn name or uh, the mayor of gotham oh, the yeah. current mayor. oh mike murphy not not the mike murphy from winning streak obviously but Mike, yes, yeah, of course. Roscoe Jenkins, <laughs> Mike Murphy, yeah. <laughs> well, he was also in the 1965 Elvis movie, Double Trouble. Oh. And there's a connection. Look, he plays a hitman. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and there's a scene where Elvis, and this is the wording online, kicks his ass with his karate, <laughs> and he falls down an old well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, you, you know on set, though, like Mike Murphy, when he saw those photos, he's like, this uh Everyone knows, like, I, I met Elvis, right? <laughs> like, like, I, like, I worked with him. Like, you know, he makes me, like, he allows me to call him Elvis because, like, we're friends. Everyone else had to call him Mr. Presley. <laughs> great but, guy. Great yeah. guy. Yeah. It's a guy who's pretty good. Like, he, he, he kicked my ass in the movie, but, like, I, I could kick his ass because, you know, it's, like, I had to show him how to do it and stuff. And no big deal. No big deal, though. The, the, the film Elvis Meets Nixon looks terrible based on the photos. It's, <laughs> it's, it was... There's no way it's bad. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it is also a bad... It's got that weird thing, though, because it's got Kevin Spacey in it now. It's like, ah, can you can you plug a Kevin Spacey movie these days? It's like, oh, uh, maybe give, give it a uh, while yet. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we've hit that point as of recording where we can we can appreciate the art separate from the man. Mm, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, then we get... Uh, just Selena's going through her list of things that she has to do for uh, Max Shrek. And you know, pick up the dry cleaning, the paper towels. I don't know. Does he need a lot of paper towels? This seems like a very, it's like very specifically go to get dry cleaning and get paper towels when you're out there. Because you, you think within this whole building, there would have been a janitor's closet that would have paper towels in it. But whatever, whatever. Uh, <laughs> it's very odd as well, though, that was it her job to put the speech in the coat? No. Like, like or does she feel like she's failed because... She should have noticed that he forgot the speech. I don't. Because why is he so? Because he's annoyed at her, which makes me think he expected her to put the speech there. Yeah, 
I well, mean, I, I, another spoiler, like this can be cut, but the way he deals with it afterwards is a bit of an overreaction. You know, pushing just out, a tad, pushing out a window. Like, what's that about? <laughs> I know. I mean, I would normally just trip someone up if they did that. But you know, <laughs> well, that's the thing though, because she does have the reaction though of like without even looking to see that they're on the ta- the, the, the speech is on the table. She does have that kind of like you know she's going through a lesson and she's like, oh again she won't swear so it's oh darn, and then she runs over to uh, the, the you know the, the pages on the desk, and it's like. I guess cause it's a, there's no way he made her write the speech. Like, she's not that level of assistant. I don't think he would trust her that much to be like... Oh, no, no, no. But, I don't know, maybe she was supposed to be like, make sure... That maybe he told her, make sure that I had the speech on me. And she is supposed to do it when she came in with the coffee. And she just remembered, oh, wait, I didn't tell him to make sure to bring a speech. And looked around, and sure enough, it is on the table. Well, he needs to grow up and learn to look after his own damn speech. Oh, totally. I mean, the guy is an asshole. <laughs> so that's 100% uh, uh, in agreement there. But I don't know, though, that the the speech was all handwritten and it seems to be several pages long. Oh, yeah. Is it double-sided? And I like that he's also titled the speech, Speech. Just in case. <laughs> just in case. <laughs> no date. So he doesn't know which speech it is. It's just a <laughs> generic speech. It's like, I'd like to wish everybody a happy Easter. And, oh, damn it. <laughs> I can't quite make out what it says. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of Gotham City. It's a, it's a strong start. It's a strong oh, start. Yeah. It's uh, certainly not thinking outside the box, though. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if they had like a full-on like Stanley Kubrick level thing of like they had to have someone write an entire speech on that thing just in case someone would be able to read. Instead of just like, scribbling some stuff, they're like, no, you have to sit down <laughs> and write a speech. Well, like, just in case people wanted to analyze the movie minute by minute. You yeah. never know. It goes on. It gives me great pleasure in wishing you all a happy and safe holiday season. There you go. Oh. It's, it's not very interesting, really. Just throwing glass and microwaves at people is probably... <laughs> it's, it's better, isn't it? It's better. Yeah, I will say that, like, friggin' Selena Kyle might have saved the people from having to listen to this terrible speech. Because if it's like that... And then it's several pages long. It's like, oh my god, who wants to come out for that? Although, we'll point out that there was more people there for Max Shrek than there was for the, the tree getting lit. So, yeah, yeah. Maybe they just. Well, like, once you've seen a tree getting lit, you've seen a tree getting lit. Yeah. I mean, come on. It's not that exciting, <laughs> is it? But they, 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 they've been promised that Max Shrek is going to change the face of speech reading. That you'll, you've never seen anything like this. His, his comments are so non-generic that you'll be stunned by what he comes out with. Towards the end of the this first page, he says, um, I would like to take a few moments to something, some of my thoughts about, and we'll never know. Oh, no. It's a bit like some of my thoughts about Phil. Phil is someone you should be in. <laughs> Wait a minute. It's, he was trying to win people over to some kooky cult. <laughs> and actually, the handwriting on another page of the speech that you can just about see is different. So how many people wrote the speech? That's what I want to know. Oh. Any intern who was knocking around <laughs> that day. <I> think. <laughs> yeah. I'm surprised, that, again, the fact that it's handwritten. It's like you think he would have had someone to type this. Again, you think it would have been, I finished the speech, Selena typed this up for me. Because you don't want to be on stage going like, what does this say? Because I can't quite make out this bit. And then even like the top, he's clearly ripped it out of the you know the, the binder. Very slovenly done. So <laughs> it doesn't he's old fit. school. It doesn't fit with his style though, does it? No. Oh, I, was, well, yeah. I suppose yeah, because we do see later on that Batman has like personalized letterhead and stuff. But you know, maybe Max Shrek hasn't got quite to that Bruce Wayne level of of rich just yet. I'm pretty sure personalized letterhead isn't that expensive. <laughs> oh, but that I noticed that earlier when I was watching the film and you know, that's it's the small details, Batman. So well yeah. done, you know. He's got his letterhead ready <laughs> just, just in case of when he leaves polite notes on people's cars and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Always thinking ahead, that bats. Yeah. But the, the but then we do get the cut back to Shrek on stage and it goes into full on. That sounds like a play. Sorry, Shrek on stage. I think there it's... is a Shrek musical. Yeah, I think, I think maybe it is literally just called Shrek on stage. Um, but he does do the. It's a we got a full on walking growl here, which I really liked. With this, uh, 
Forgot my speech. Remind me to take it out on what's her name. And uh, I, I do love that line though, because even though it does have the you know it's needlessly abusive undertones of like I'm just gonna take all this out, you know, me forgetting my speech, I'm taking out on Selena Kyle. Oh, and as he as he says that, the cat's head is behind him. No, oh, yeah. Oh, there you go. So again, more more foreshadowing. <laughs> oh, he's creating Catwoman in this moment. He is though. This is this is all stuff that leads up to you know the reason, you know, the, the situation you know later on where she will become Catwoman is all about Max Shrek. So um, now, is is that definitely a wig? Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> sadly, it is. Yes, unfortunately, for sure. <laughs> okay. Maybe it'd be great though that turned out that was Chris Walken's actual hair, and every time you've seen him since has been a wig. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a conspiracy. <laughs> you know, he, he sort of you know takes to the mic then to uh, attempt to salvage the situation, and uh, we got, I guess we got, got a bit of a cliffhanger here. Like, what's gonna happen? Like, what could possibly become you know become of Max Shrek in this horrible situation? Who knows? You've got you've got to stay tuned. Mm. I mean, you could just watch the movie, but I wouldn't advise doing that. <laughs> I would advise tuning in on Friday mm. when, when we'll be back with another minute. Indeed. Because uh, yeah, I am in fact uh, noted out for this particular minute. So uh, by all by all means, unless uh, do you guys have anything else you want to do, you want to bring up particularly about this, like the the amazing gaze that you know Shrek's handlers have behind him, just staring at him as he's about to give his speech and whatnot. <laughs> uh, my my notes, I just have he's not Santa. He says he's Santa, or someone says he's Santa. He's he's not. Mm. I suppose so, yeah, because Polly, like, you know, <laughs> don't want to ruin the illusion for any small children who may be listening, but you yourself are a proud and frequent Christmas elf. Uh, yep, I work for Santa, and that's not Santa, so... Uh, kinda... <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're here officially to say that this man is not Santa. He's not Santa, no. What what about the Santa that we saw collecting, like, in the street earlier? There's a, there a Santa out with a bell collecting stuff. Was that the real guy, or...? It could well that? have been. It could well have been. But I refuse for Christopher Walken to be represented as Santa. That just goes against any kind of. <laughs> <laughs> as it could have been, he's supposed to be. He's supposed to be dressed up as Santa, but he put the wig on. He put the the, the fake beard on wrong, so he's got oh. his head instead of his chin. Oh, actually, I had a question. Oh yeah, go ahead. So Catwoman, obviously, who will be born soon? Um, she becomes Catwoman. Does she die? That's not the question. But when she falls. Is it presumed that she dies and then? Well, uh, it's. I assume so, even though that makes no sense. Mm. Okay. Well, because why do cats resurrect her? Yeah. I'm sure we'll get onto that. But well, well, that was the question because then the cats bite her and try and eat her a little bit, and then she somehow gets quite powerful and able to do fighting and all of that and backflips somehow. Mm. Um. So then we were talking earlier, and it's like, well, Spider-Man gets his powers from being bitten by a spider. So are these toxic street cats? That, that's the question. Are, they, <laughs> are the cats in the streets of Gotham radioactive? Yeah, they've been uh, they've been drinking from the sewer water. Yeah, that makes, from the statues. This makes sense because they do make a point of like, oh, you know, I got a batch of co- toxic waste from your clean textile plant and all that business. So maybe that was like, oh, the the plant or the cats the whole time were supposed to be radioactive. And so year, 30 years of confusion have now been like, no, Tim Burton will have to come out and be like, oh, yeah, I probably should have put more emphasis on the fact that they were radioactive cats. But, yeah, that, that, that's what that was supposed to be. Yeah, because otherwise, mm. how? How does she? <laughs> it doesn't make sense. <laughs> All I'm saying, toxic street cats. That's, that's... <laughs> I, I'm on board with this theory. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, but yeah, yeah. Uh, is that, this is anything else. I guess we can we can wrap this one up. But yep. Much like the, one of the the Christmas presents nonchalantly thrown by the reckless Max Shrek into the crowd. Yes, we we will depart in a not reckless fashion because we need to come back in one piece for Friday. But uh, Polly, would you like once again to tell our listeners where they can find you online if they want to, you know, check out anything you're up to or or send you a message? Um, absolutely. So I'm part of Fire Donkey Productions and we have our Phil, our Phil, our show called The Church of Phil. And you can find us on Facebook under Church of Phil or Fire Donkey Productions, as well as Twitter and Instagram. And if you're interested in the show and or joining a cult, then just get in touch. It's going to be a lot of fun. 
Yes, it's uh, one of my top three cults. I would recommend <laughs> at least, uh, you know, giving it a look. Give it a try. See if it suits you and your cult needs. I think you, and, you, uh, come. you guys really need, you need to bag yourself like a major celebrity. Like, because, you know, you, you got obviously Scientology had Tom Cruise. Freaking What's-His-Face has got Alison Mack now. So I guess you you need to get like a top tier. If you can get Chris Walken involved in this. Chris Walken, yeah, maybe. Well, Liam's little brother is Declan McKenna. And he's an uh, up and coming singer songwriter. Ah. <laughs> so we have you're, you're, you're ahead of the game. <laughs> we have him, but he's he's a slow burner. Well, he's not even that slow. He's he's played Glastonbury, so he's big in America. Whoa. Well, there you go. You've you've got it down, Pat. This is a good yeah. scheme. <laughs> that was the thing though, because I was so glad when you said up and coming, because it's like, oh, I'm going to show that I'm not hip by like having no idea who that is. <laughs> but the thing is, I had no idea of any song that is currently out in the charts. So, like, as far as I'm concerned, like music ended in like 2010, <laughs> pretty much, because that's the last time I remember a song being big. <laughs> well, um. You, you might have heard him in a shop because that happens now, which is really weird. But anyway, in the in the meantime, between now and Friday, if you want to chat to us, we are everywhere. We're on Twitter at Bat Minute. We're on Facebook at the Bat Minute Listeners Cave, and you can also go on our Instagram. That's that's another exciting place. And you know, be nice to us. Be nice. Be lovely. Be kind. Give us five stars on iTunes. Don't give us four. If you give us four, we hate you. No, we don't really. That would still be nice. But yes, review us because it'll help us bump up the, the charts and whatnot and be seen more and more and more. And that means more content. So join us again on Friday where we will have Minute 12. See you then. Next time, a trundling bundle. A beloved entrepreneur spouts oral manure to the folks on the plaza floor. But what's at the core of the gift brought to the fore outside Shrek's department store? For all this and more, join us Friday. Same bat pod, different bat minute.